but we're short more than half a million houses. So this article says, uh, home purchases won't be going away as millennials are continuing to buy homes. Um, it's no secret that home inventories around the country are at their lowest point in decades. Many metro areas have a shortage of housing. Texas alone is short more than half a million houses. Uh, nationwide, there's a deficit of more than 3 million homes. And here's someone quoted from Freddie Mac. Uh, We're in the midst of a demographic w tailwind and expect home purchase demands will remain strong well into the decade as the peak cohorts of millennials turn 30 years of age in 2020 and beyond. Simply put, new housing supply is not keeping up with the demand. So um, demand is definitely through the roof. So let's go on here. Here's a little article um, called The Advantage of Spec Building. So um, today's video is about how to make money spec building or make money building spec homes um, in Texas. So you may be asking what exactly is a spec home? There's a huge market for speculative or spec homes. So a spec home is built by a general contractor um, builder with the purpose of, of reselling it to, to make a profit. So the word uh, speculative, you're speculating that the house, uh, that your design will, will sell, um, you're speculating that the home will sell uh, upon being built. So it's, it's a great way to make a profit in the real estate industry, um, it, you know, especially with the increasing not that anything's wrong with fix and flips because there are quite a bit of deals out there. There are people that are doing them. Um, however, increased competition with the fix and flip industry, um, it can reduce the spread or the profit margin while in, you know, the investors are taking on risks. Um, you, you obviously have the house inspected, but you know, you could go, you could maybe say, okay, this home needs $50,000 worth of repairs. And then you get into it head first and you find out, okay, you know, maybe it needs 60,000. So, you know, you're having to scrounge up 10 grand that, that we're kind of, you know, we're unforeseen, unforeseen costs. Um, whereas with a, a new construction build like this, you have a better idea. Everything's pretty, pretty clear cut. You have a construction budget and you build accordingly. You take into account all of your materials and you have a pretty good idea of what, you know, the cost will be, what it'll run you. Um, to eventually make a profit. Um, so another benefit is that it seems easier for spec builders to find private money for using spec builds compared to flips. Um, that's up for debate because, you know, the people do use private money for fix and flips as well. Um, but again, it, it depends on the deal and depends on what you're looking to do. So with spec building, um, you have a clear lot, so you have an empty lot. So you're basically starting with a clean slate as you're building the house and the land. So as you can tell, there's no pre-existing issues with the land because there's nothing there. So you can design it as you will. You know the amount of square feet that you have to work with. You can run it by the architect, engineer, you know, get the plans, um, and you can create it as you wish or, or create a model that you believe that, um, uh, that uh, a family or a couple or whoever would buy the the home that they would uh, they would not only buy but that they would also enjoy. Um, so uh, dealing with um, it's important to recognize that much of your profit comes from the initial buy. So pick you know researching, finding the lot, picking the right lot, and then getting it at a, at a good price. So a lot of your profit margin will come from the initial purchase. So, you know, you want to make sure that you've done your homework, you've done your research and that buying the lot is, is a fantastic deal. And there's no doubt in your mind. Um, so if you can definitely ask experienced builders and investors for recommendations on contractors. Um, here's just a bit of advice. These are three spec builders. Um, I've kind of run through most of it as well. Um, okay. Yeah, let's see. Okay. So John here says spec building has its place in the upswing of the real estate cycle. Now is the time for, for providing new infill housing. So infill just means uh, in, in a metro area, in a metropolitan area, in areas of growth where new builds have lagged over the last several years. More and more areas have now pent up demand for new homes. Spec building takes your time, attention, and capital. doesn't have to be your money and can provide outstanding returns in a fairly short uh, time period. So again, they kind of go through different areas. Um, you know, 
this guy is doing some building some homes in the Rio Grande Valley um, in South Texas, um, North Dakota. Don't care about North Dakota. East Austin. I just sold a project in Central East Austin. This is in a gentrifying neighborhood that is close to downtown, the state capital and the University of Texas. I had an active partner on the ground in Austin while I was a passive investor. I bought a lot. Uh, old small house in it for 72K, built for about 93K and sold for 265K, giving us 100K in gross margin. So that kind of uh, runs through basically what he's saying. He says neighborhood, uh, Central East Austin, where it's close to, and then some of the financials uh, between it. So uh, here's a piece of advice from Rich here. I would urge anyone interested in spec building to double and triple check and making sure the lot they are purchasing is a fantastic deal. The majority of the profit is made on the acquisition of the lot, as we mentioned before. The second thing would be to make sure that you've shopped contractors until you are exhausted. I've actually had general contractors sign on the, on the building permit and only charge me a week east of my condo in Cancun, providing I oversee all of the construction and hire only uh, licensed subcontractors. So uh, basically the, you know, what he's saying is find good help. Um, and there's definitely plenty of resources to do that. There's online forums, which can be outdated. A terrific tool would be Facebook groups. There are countless Facebook groups um, for construction and real estate and definitely a lot of people um, that are willing to help you if you, if you ask for your, for their help. Um, and you know, there's a lot of people that be, they'd be happy to make recommendations. Um, you know, maybe just even help you help you get off the ground and, and you know, they help you do a couple of deals. You can help them in, in return. And next thing you know, you have a, a pretty good business partner or someone that you can work with in the future. Um, so basically, you know, in addition, do your research on the local market, consider the, the employment factors, um, maybe the, the median wage that people, that people would have in this area, what companies live or what companies are in this, oops, what companies are in this, in this town, where do people want to live? What is the absorption rate, uh, properties listed versus properties sold? Um, so basically, if the if the absorption rate is above 50%, you should do just fine. Um, considering that the average sales price for newly, uh, try to consider the average sales price for newly built homes and know how long it takes to sell in your market. Um, so be prepared for what people want in their home, uh, what they're wanting to pay for. So for example, if you're building a home that's a three bedroom, two bath starter home for a young couple, with two, you know, with two kids, with one kid, two kids, whatever it may be, um, you know, maybe having enough space for a backyard or ha having something that would kind of make amenities for uh, for the family there. Um, but also um, getting familiar with the city's restrictions and requirements. If you're familiar with fix and flips, um, and you're getting, you know, this is your first new construction build, you try to use your previous knowledge that, that you have from real estate or, or from anything in general. So like anything else, it's good to have a plan B, keep that contingency or backup plan in, in your back pocket. Um, it can make more sense to just build a spec home. So for example, let's say you had a small rundown house, it may be a better idea to uh, tear down the house and then build a brand new spec home um, it could be more economically feasible and be, and be better for your deal to do something like that. Um, and another important factor is understanding how to get financing. So uh, having flexible, hard money lender um, that can get you funded in seven to 10 days, that can be the difference between, um, between you purchasing the lot or your competition, someone else purchasing it. So a great hard money lender is worth their weight in gold. Um, if you're doing a new construction build, feel, feel free to contact me. Um, I'm working with Streamline Funding here in Northwest Austin. Um, we can help you close within seven to 10 business days. Um, and to see if you qualify, feel free to call or direct message me here on LinkedIn um, or, or whichever. But uh, above all, it, it's important to just um, you know assess your risks, um, ha have a contingency plan and you know just write out all of your goals and, and what, what you set to accomplish and, um, and, and let people know what you're doing as well. Um, you know, look for those recommendations on Facebook 
uh, internet forums, you know, word of mouth, whatever it may be. And uh, when you ask, you know, people open the door and uh, try to help you. So uh, go out there and, and take care.